So here are the answers to the test for topic one. The first one is base units. Which of the following is a fundamental unit? The answer is the ampere. This is an easy question because it involves just remembering the base units, something you must uh, learn off by heart. Question two, which of the following will reduce random errors in an experiment? Um, the answer is question 2D, repeat the readings. Um, using an instrument having a greater precision, that's going to, um, that's not going to reduce the random error um, because a precision error would create a systematic issue. Checking the calibration is also systematic. Checking the zero error, that's basically making sure that the needle is on zero. That's also a systematic. So these three would cause systematic errors. Repeated readings would target random errors because random errors occur because of one-time events. So it's very unlikely that that one-time event will happen twice. Question uh, four, we have um, a current in a resistor which has two amps, plus or minus 0 0.02 amps. And the question asks you for the absolute uncertainty and the percentage uncertainty. The absolute uncertainty is on here, you can see it, 0 0.02. This is what we call the absolute uncertainty. And the um, percentage uncertainty would be this number, divided by this number times 100, which gives us an answer of A. Question five, what is the equivalent of this number? So the first thing to do is to express it in scientific notation, which would be 9.36 times 10 to the five, minus five, minus five. Um, that's not an answer because they give you the prefixes. This is milli times 10 to the minus 3 times 10 to the minus 9 and then minus 6 and minus 6. Well, it's definitely nine, not 9.36 times 10 to the minus 6 because it's actually minus 5. So the correct answer is C because it's 93.6 times 10 to the minus 6. It's actually not a level four question, it's a little bit harder than that. Question six, a piece of paper is measured to be 26 centimeters. So if we express that in millimeters, it would be 26.0 centimeters with a ruler, which is using millimeters. What is the final measurement? Well, the uncertainty could be 96.0 plus and minus, plus or minus 0.1, right? That's not the most correct way of expressing it. The best way to express it is to use the rule that the analog instrument has an uncertainty of plus or minus half the smallest interval. So it's 26.00 plus or minus 0.05. So this one is the correct one, but this one's not wrong, okay? There is a degree of flexibility because um, you might find this instrument is difficult to read, for example. So this would still be considered correct, C or D. Question seven, which of the following is correct? An accurate measurement is always precise. An imprecise measurement is always inaccurate. Systematic errors can be minimized with repeated trials and a systematic a measurement can be precise but not accurate. Now the answer is D because um, accuracy is that you hit the right answer exactly. But precision is to do with all your readings being in the same area. Now you could have all your readings in the same area but not correct because of a systematic error. And so this one is the correct answer. Now we're going on to the calculation questions. This was a tricky one. The diagram shows the temperature of a liquid before and after heating. We have here a reading that says 24 point something. And here we have a reading that says 68 point something. 
So if we calculate that subtraction, as it asks, state the value and uncertainty in the increase in temperature. So we have to find a change in temperature. So we're going to go from 68.5 minus 24.5, right? So you're going to go from this number to this number. And we get a value for the increase in temperature of 44 degrees. Now, the uncertainty is has to be worked out for a subtraction. And when we subtract, we add absolute uncertainties. The uncertainty in this reading is plus or minus half um, the smallest um, interval, which is one degree. So half of one degree is 0 0.5. So we need to add 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5, which gives us an uncertainty of one degree. Ignore that, that's wrong. So it's, the actual answer is 44.0 plus or minus one degree. The joule is equivalent to which combination of SI units? The answer would be kilograms meter squared s to the squared or newton meters but this is in base base units this is the perfect answer and how do we get there well you need some relationship which has the joule which could be for example work which is force times distance right so force has units of newtons and distance has units of meters now how do we work out the newton in base units well, the Newton comes from force equals mass times acceleration, which is kilograms meters per second squared. So you have kilograms meters per second squared times meters, which gives us meters squared. Um, this is another calculation question. We have a length and a width, and we eventually need to work out an area and an uncertainty for the area. Now, area is length times width. So let's go through the questions and the answers. Um, the first part asks, calculate the percentage uncertainty in the length of the block. So this is a question uh, to see if you know how to work out a percentage uncertainty. So the length would be, oops, 0 0.01 divided by 1.5, so 0 0.01 divided by 1.5 times 100, which gives us an uncertainty of 0.70% or 0.67. This is the best way to express it, one significant figure. Now, part two, calculate the area. So this is not a question about uncertainties. It's just a simple calculate the area of the board. So the area of the board is the length 1.5 times the width 1.25 which gives us 1.88 now to the correct number of significant figures we have 1.23 if we, we express it in, in scientific notation so we have three and three so that's fine now the last bit calculate the absolute uncertainty in the area of the board well this is the area right so the absolute uncertainty because it's a multiplication length times width we have the absolute uncertainty over the area remember we're trying to work out this number here the absolute uncertainty in the area would be equal to the fractional uncertainty in the length and plus the fractional uncertainty in the width so if we add 0.01 over 150 plus 0.01 over 125, it will give us our value, our real value, over 1.88. So if we multiply 1.88 times all of this, we will end up with an answer of 1.88 plus or minus 0.03. Question 10. What is the absolute uncertainty in the following measurements? So now we're going to work out the absolute uncertainty in a range of values. So what we call the average uncertainty. So what we do here is we take the largest value and subtract the smallest value from it, divided by 2. So we have the largest value, which is 5.8, and we subtract the smallest value, which is 5.4, and we divide it by 2, which gives us 0.2 centimetres. 
And now question eight. This is now getting a bit trickier. We have the current passing through a resistor and um, some resistance. So we have a relationship. P equals R I squared. Write down the value of the supplied power. So the first thing you need to do is just calculate it, right? So we have 1, 1, 7 watts. Write down the value of the, sorry, B. Find the percentage uncertainty for the current. So um, we take the current, which is 3, plus or minus 0 0.1. Um, and the resistance, good. So this is our current, 0 0.1 over... Uh, 3 times 100, which gives us a percentage of 3.3%, or one significant figure, 3. And for the resistance, the same. We go to the resistance. Here's the resistance, 0 0.5 divided by 13 times 100 gives us 3.8, or 4%. And then the last bit, which is find the absolute uncertainty for the power. We calculate this, which we have here. This is our power. And so we need to consider the equation. So what we have here is I squared. So the absolute uncertainty in power will be equal to the uncertainty in resistance, the, the um, ratio, actually I said that wrong, it's the absolute uncertainty over the power will be equal to the absolute uncertainty in the resistance over the resistance plus two times the absolute uncertainty in I over I, right? So you can see, because that's a square relationship. So if we substitute those values in, we should see that there is an absolute uncertainty of 12.9 watts, if you have a look through the working out. Now, earlier on in the question, it asked you to one significant figure to one significant figure. So one of you did this correctly earlier and you wrote 100. So if you used that value, you would end up with 11. OK. And this is the final question, which just has a complicated equation. So a pyramid has a square base of side X and height H. The volume is given by this expression. If V is measured to 5%, so V has a percentage uncertainty of 5, H is measured to 3, what is the percentage uncertainty in X? So the best thing to do is to rearrange that equation to make X the subject. So X equals 3V um, over H to the half. So the way that we work this out now, the percentage uncertainties are added right so you add this percentage uncertainty to this percentage uncertainty but because it's to a power you multiply it by half so you get a final value of four percent and that's it